there's a lot we don't know about biology. And still we want to build solutions. And mm -hmm. how you, you deal with this high uncertainty, as you, as you said at the beginning, right? Because we're, we're literally blindfolded. So, <laughs> so I just wanted to get a little bit more of your insights behind the companies that are public or whether yeah. it's su is successful today. Yeah, I think that most people that outside look into this industry have no idea how tough it is. Like most of the major drug companies, Pfizer, Merck, Sanofi, uh, BMS, Bristol Myers Squibb, you know, they're based on like five or six drugs, period. Like that's what drives the vast majority of their revenue. And almost all the value in that industry accretes to the asset. That's what makes it so hard versus other industries to structurally amass the data because it's really hard to get paid for that fundamental generation of data-driven insight the way, you know, think about Intel or NVIDIA, right? The chips really do well in this industry. That has not been true historically in life sciences. All the value accretes to the asset that goes into the clinic. And so that has made it much more difficult to fund the stacking of knowledge, plus knowledge is very siloed. So when you think about the ability to look at all the data that, as you said, on the web and build these large language models, you had a lot of places you could go to get that data. You have a lot of wall gardens, right, in uh, the biology area and less incentive. It's a very artisanal process. That's also, for me, the reason I'm doing it. Because when we think about the problems that we solve in humanity, that motivated me to do Monta. It turns out one of my kids has this really debilitating chronic disease to which there is no great um, solution, and I think there's no, no better motivated entrepreneur than a mom on a mission. And uh, for me, when I looked at this industry, when I was working at, you know, at Ancestry, I said, there has to be a better way. As you said, 10% odds at a billion dollars. Like, just think about the value creation upside uh, from thinking differently about how we approach this problem and use computation. But you are not wrong that we still do not know so much about human biology. And everyone in this room, we are very heterogeneous. There's not that much that differentiates our DNA, but how our bodies actually work, what we eat, the environment, right? All the other things around us that we're exposed to and how they respond has a lot of intricacies that we're just beginning to untangle. And this is one of the reasons why we look at this as the biology century, because we're now able for the first time to amass the, the fidelity of data at scale and be able to interrogate it so that we can actually start to untangle some of these mysteries for the first time. Um, it would be wonderful if all, I would love it, you know, as a tech person, right? If all the, if all the pharma companies in the world shared all the data from all their clinical trials and you were required to post that and share all the details from those trials, we would make a lot more progress faster. Unfortunately, that's not required. So in the meantime, we have to find other methods. And so you can imagine that's exactly how we came up with our hypothesis at Monti. How do we start with chemistry that's already been chronically in the human body? We already know that these scaffolds can be tolerated on an ongoing basis. If we're gonna create a chronically dosed medicine, I sure as heck would rather have something that I know and have already been in a person for a law, often for a long time. Yeah. But then I have to figure out how do I precision match those into biologic pathways. And that's where AI gets really interesting in understanding the chemistry and doing that precision matching. By the way, it's actually how drug development started in the 30s and 40s. We serendipitously discovered antibiotics and all these things, but it was serendipitous. Yeah. What's awesome about AI is we can now make it predictable. So you have to take a really hairy problem like that and then try to find a way to break it down. And it's also why I only are pers am pursuing clinically validated pathways in the beginning. We already know that there's, for example, a biologic medicine. Unfortunately, in chronic diseases, take just inflammation and autoimmune, we spend $165 million, billion, excuse me, billion dollars, 65 billion of that goes on biologics that go to less than 10% of the patients. And yet we have 60% of our country that suffers from at least one of these chronic diseases. We got we to gotta make pills, pill-based format, so we can make these more affordable, accessible, and help more people. That's what we're trying to do. And you have to, like, you got to break it down. You got to cut some of that complexity off.